Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in the current series on Bobby Fischer. I'd like to open this one with a question. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an unbreakable barrier? In this game we may have an answer. It was played at the candidates tournament in Zagreb in 1959. Fischer, perhaps one of the most fearsome attackers in chess history and aged only 16, has the white pieces against Tigran Petrosian, the all-time master of defense and prophylaxis, who would become world champion four years after this game was played. The scene was set for a titanic encounter that was promptly provided. Fischer, as usual, opened with e4, and Petrosian answered with the solid Carol Kahn defense, c6 against which Fischer always used the same approach in his early career, namely the two knights variation with knight c3, instead of the uh, more normal d4. And there's a few ideas in mind with this approach, the main ones being to retain flexibility with regards to the development of the d-pawn, and also to prevent a quick bishop f5, from black, which is normal in many lines of the Karokan after an exchange on e4. Play continued with d5, knight f3, and bishop g4. If black had tried to go down the classical variation lines by exchanging on e4 and playing bishop f5 now, he gets into trouble. Let's have a look. If d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop f5, knight g3 is the way to meet this move. And now comes bishop g6. If instead bishop g4, now h3, and black is losing either the bishop pair or crucial tempi given the early stage of the game. So bishop g6, and now h4, threatening to trap the bishop with h5. So h6, and now knight e5, and white is winning the bishop pair. If bishop h7, then white has a big advantage with queen h5, so mate threats on f7, so it forces g6, and now bishop c4, uh, sharp move, again forcing the response e6, and not of course g takes h5, or bishop takes f7, is mate. So e6, and now queen e2, and black has a terrible game, not only is he behind in development, but his kingside pawn structure is terrible and his bishop is blocked in by the pawn here at g6. So uh, naturally Petrosian isn't going to go down that route and uh, instead plays bishop g4. So now Fischer plays h3 and Petrosian gives up the bishop pair rather than lose time which is an interesting decision that's justified by his upcoming light square pawn strategy with e6 coming in a second. So after queen takes f3, he plays knight f6. If instead e6 at this stage, there's a nice gambit given by Fischer that's worth knowing. Goes d4, sacking the d-pawn. After d takes e4, knight takes e4, allowing the pawn on d4 to be taken. Queen takes d4, because now comes bishop d3, and uh, white gets a good attack for his sacrifice pawn after developing the dark squared bishop and castling queen side. So, knight f6 is what Petrosian played. And now came d3, which is, you know, what you could say is a bit passive for Fischer. Um, but as always, he's done massive opening analysis and shows that playing d4 instead is weaker. For example, if d4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, queen takes d4, bishop d3, and now knight bd7, threatening knight e5, is good for black, and white has little compensation for the pawn. And other moves, instead of playing d3, uh, when Fischer played it, allows black to equalize without difficulty. So, d3 is the best move. And now e6. And g3 from Fischer, planning of course to Fianchetto is light squared bishop. And now came bishop b4 and bishop d2. It's an, an important move, bishop d2. If bishop g2 
instead, planning to meet d4 with a3. Now comes queen a5, and black is winning. There's no a takes b4 because if queen takes a1, this knight's going to fall. Um, so, bishop d2. And now d4 is relieving white of his bishop pair and gaining space in the center after knight b1 and bishop takes d2 check. Fisher writes at this stage, in this tournament Keres and Benko both tried at this point instead of taking on d2, queen b6 which forces white to weaken his queen side with b3 due to the latent threat on b2. Um, if instead bishop takes b4 then queen takes b4 check and after that check is dealt with this queen takes b2 um, so b3 but um, Fisher's refutation of this is that black's queen is slightly misplaced after for example knight bd7 bishop g2 a5 a3 bishop takes d2 check knight takes d2 queen c5 threatening uh, c2 so queen d1 because the rook is tied to defending a3 and now h5 expanding on the king side and h4 with an edge to white according to Fischer although Fritz disagrees and gives black a small edge instead but I think we should probably go with what uh, Fischer says over Fritz in any case, Petrosian didn't want to go down this line, despite the fact that his countryman Tal accused Fisher of bad judgment for preferring white here. So Tal is in agreement with Fritz, but still I would take Fisher's view first. Anyway, after knight b1, Petrosian played bishop takes d2 check. Then came knight takes d2 and e5 and after having traded off his dark squared bishop it makes sense for black to advance the center pawns to dark squares and grab more space in the center so play continued bishop g2 now c5 again getting his pawns to dark squares preparing knight c6 fisher castles and then came knight c6 and queen e2 and over this position fisher writes the critical juncture in our earlier game, in round 2, Petrosian had played g5 here and gained an advantage. After um, knight f3, h6, h4, rook g8, a3, queen e7, h takes g5, h takes g5, queen d2, threatening the pawn at g5, knight d7 to defend it, now c3 challenging black center Petrosian castles queen side they came c takes d4 and e takes d4 and that's how the game went you know at the earlier game in the same tournament but uh, in this game that we're looking at now Petrosian was fearful that Fisher may have prepared a line against g5 which he had so instead of uh, going down that line after queen e2 Petrosian played queen e7, which indicated an intention to castle long and not try and prevent f4, which is one of the ideas of playing g5, as well as gaining space on the king's side. So now Fischer was able to play f4, and Petrosian castled, and Fischer continued with a3, which is preparing to pawn storm and uh, Petrosian played knight e8 which is typical of his patient style it's uh, preparing to move f6 so that black can keep a strong pawn center if white takes on e5 and um, also planning to reroute this knight later maybe to c7 or d6 um, and a drawback of this move is that it allows b4 immediately and um, you know getting this pawn storm underway which is a standard strategy in positions positions with kings castled on opposite sides of the board and this looks like a pawn sack but because of Petrosian's move knight e8 it's not thanks to the pressure on f7 and a7 from the white rooks for example if um, c takes b4 
it, now a takes b4 and if queen takes b4 um, you know because if uh, knight takes b4 then a7 is falling but now f takes c5 and the black position is falling apart um, the knight can't take this or a7 is falling and meanwhile there's pressure on f7 and that's something that very rarely happened to Petrosian. You know, he always keeps his position as solid as he can. Okay, that's the end of part one.